testing and um, so when it comes to testing if you're testing JavaScript we're pretty well served so different levels of testing you have you want to test like function uh, your classes or maybe some small components you have unit tests with lots of test runners uh, assertion libraries do a step up you have end-to-end -end tests and this is like if you want to boot your app and kind of test user flows through the app and um, also pretty well served here um, and then, like um, something we use in Intercom is Ghost Inspector, where like uh, it actually does tests similar to Selenium um, against your live app, um, and we use it for like testing our payment flows like every minute or something like that, just to make sure nothing's broken. But what about CSS testing? Um, you're probably even thinking, why bother? Um, I guess you know um, styles sometimes can make bad things happen, um, and when you want to test that, um, I guess who's ever done this sort of thing. Um, it's pretty horrendous. It doesn't scale well, so we're basically taking elements and we're checking the style attribute or we're checking classes and this is fine, but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't scale. You, you can't actually do this for every kind of possibility, so like, there must be a better way. Um, so what we have is visual regression testing and what this is, is on the left hand side you have like a base set of images for what the current state of your app is. On the right hand side we have the new state, basically your PR or whatever. And you can see here, they, we do a diff, and we can see on the right hand side now, something's broken, the side map has disappeared. And that's kind of visual regression testing. So if you want to get set up, set up with this, what do you do? So this product called Percy, um, it's a SaaS product. Um, it's pretty good, it's really easy to get set up. And um, I'm just going to walk you through some of the features and how to get set up. So, like, pretty much covers most of the um, main like CI CD workflows, um, I'm sure they're going to add more. Um, version control providers, um, you know, the main ones, and if it's not supported, like like Bitbucket currently isn't supported, but they have webhooks um, which you can kind of hook into your own. And all the main frameworks, they have like kind of libraries to help you hook up. Um, and there's many more of these. And it's free, just recently they used to be, a, it's a paid product, but there's also a free plan for open source. So. Um, that was only recent. Um, so to get set up, like you install this Percy library, um, you get a, grab it from npm. Um, you take either an existing test that like renders DOM, or you like create one. So here it's just using QUnit to you know do an end-to-end -end test, um, and then you kind of Trojan horse your Percy snapshot call. So down on line 13, we're just saying now the test at rest, take a snapshot. Um, easy enough, set up your project in Percy, set up CI, CD, this is using Circle, um, set up GitHub, you add the Percy integration, and then basically there's a few other steps in there um, in the GitHub thing, but basically that's it. So every PR that goes to your, um, your repo will go through this flow. And where does this kind of prove useful to us? So straight off, like, Potential CSS bugs. It stopped like kind of things where critical buttons like and pay flows kind of disappeared or were non-clickable or um, not good stuff that you wouldn't really think about. Um, but it also has removed certain types of tests. So tests that would be like, oh, is this class here? Does it look like this? Is this stuff on the page? Kind of really static tests. You could just remove those and just replace them in a snapshot. Um, and actually, one thing that was kind of surprising was. We, we kind of use it now as an extra data point when we're making risky changes. So we'd have like a lot of snapshots of all over the app. And for doing things like uh, library upgrades or framework upgrades, which could have a wide blast radius, we'll run it through Percy and like we'll know straight away whether something's borked. Might pass, it's happened you know, before where our test suite passes, but actually it's actually borked live. So this is called this sort of stuff. And yeah, large refactorings. Um, yeah, it's, it's worked great there. Um, so if you want to get involved or use Percy, here's some things, uh, best practices, which remove some of the flakiness involved. Um, turn off your animations because what will end up happening is on the right where different s snapshots will have different states. So all the main libraries, um, they allow you to turn them off. Think of it, like D3, it's non-trivial. There's like 
a highly voted like Stack Overflow answer, but it's out there. Um, date mocking is another one. So um, you can see here on the right, um, a little red thing. Um, basically, the date was changing every day. So every day, you'd have to like reapprove. Um, so there's multiple libraries you can use. It's TimeCop.js um, and Sinon or Sinon. Still, still no one knows. And uh, Lolex, which is like which is used in Sinon, um, but it's been abstracted. Um, reproducible data. So don't hit live endpoints because live endpoints are going to change. Um, and also like mock, like like don't have random numbers or like like similar to the date stuff. So this is t tests that are just constantly fail because the the data is just changing. And this is a a weird one, but remote images. So it turned out that every once in a while, like our these images would just disappear. But then it turned out we were using uh, some placeholder service, and we had thousands. We we're basically DDoSing them, um, like and just are getting rate limited or something. So the images just disappear. So we just changed them all to local images. Um, so summary: it gives you extra confidence in your CSS changes, but as well as that, or and. Um, if you have a design system or some kind of UI heavy either library or it's definitely consider using it, especially with, with the free plan. And it turned out to be an unlikely tool in like many refactoring tasks. So you, you wouldn't use it on its own, but it's a, an extra data point to give you that confidence that yeah, the changes I made are gonna work. And like I said, it's free for open source, so yay. That's it. Thank you.